Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we're kind of obsessed with bringing you the board games you might want to have in your collection. So how do you feel about forest critters, about building cities and exploring new territories? Well if so, here's five things I think you need to know about Everdell. And did I mention it's gorgeous? Welcome to Everdell. Here you are the leader of a group of forest critters who are trying to expand their territories and settle new cities. The game is played over a year, four seasons, as you try to construct buildings, meet new characters and host events. Everdell at its core centres on tableau building and worker placement and the aim of the game is to get the most victory points from among your tableau or the event cards. On your turn you can play a card from your hand, paying all of its cost, or from the meadow, which is a face-up tableau that acts like cards are in your hand. You can also place various workers on spots on the board which provide you with resources and cards. The cool thing about these cards is that buildings are linked to the critter cards. Allow me to explain. On every card is its name, any abilities it has, its costs and another card will be named. This means if you have the building card in play, if you play the matching critter, you can play the critter for free. This is the unique part of this game, where if you match cards together, you can benefit greatly. Thing one, what's this game all about? So this theme of forest animals is not a new one. We've seen it in games like Root. However, how it's implemented here is incredibly well done, to be honest. Um, the deck of cards that you play with um, are full of kind of interesting characters, places for them to go, and you do really feel kind of connected with what it is you're doing and with the world of Everdell itself. Um, in summary, I suppose this theme is one that's very inoffensive, it's very fun and very light and cutesy. Um, if I had to compare this to another game, I guess it would actually be Race for the Galaxy, um, as that's also a tableau builder where you're drawing cards and trying to make combinations. However, Race for the Galaxy has kind of a much broader scope than Everdell. Thing 2, Mechanics. This game actually plays incredibly smoothly, however, it's a little bit more tricky than it might let on. The goal of the game seems to be to push you towards combining specific cards together so that you can play one of them for free. I'm sure who doesn't want to do that. However, the amount of cards you actually get to see throughout the deck and the chances of finding the exact one you want to combine with the cards you have is actually kind of slim. Um, this gets better obviously the more players you play with, but then there's also a further chance that they will take the cards that you also wanted. The event cards also require you to have two specifically named cards if you want to score them and to be fair it just feels a little bit like folly to go down that path despite it being amazing of course when it does actually work out. On a whole this game is really really fun to play, um, it plays very smoothly and it's one that you're always eager to explore. Thing 3 on the table. Everdell definitely takes up quite a bit of space, um, but it's all very self-contained. The board is large, but there's room for your resources on there and also kind of the meadow, you know, the face of tableau. Um, apart from that, each player will have their own tableau, which takes up further space. Um, but it is very, very impressive when it's set up and it's definitely eye-catching. Um, the rule book seemed very thorough when we read it, but we found ourselves having to look up or clarify specific details as we went along. Um, it doesn't take long to set up, it's actually really quick and it takes about an hour for two of us to play. The replayability here comes from this giant deck of cards and while you may end up seeing similar or the same critters or buildings each time you play, you'll find yourself using them differently. Thing 4, Aesthetics. So before I talk about how this game looks and feels, I'm going to remind you that I'm reviewing the collector's edition of Everdell, which means if you buy this at retail, it won't look as shiny as mine does. Now it's not gonna affect gameplay in any way, you know, shape or form, but this is the version I have to review. Um, so the first thing to point out is that this game has the most over the top art and components I've ever come across. Each of the critters and buildings are kind of adorable, enduring and beautifully rendered. Um, the game board actually has room for a tableau on it, which is which is really unusual. I think it was an it was a nice touch, um, and my version comes with a three D three 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 D tree. There we go. 
Um, and while it's incredibly eye-catching, I find it to be completely useless in terms of, of gameplay, especially at higher player accounts. Because the tree faces forward, it only faces one way, and you keep the deck of cards in there and the event cards are supposed to lie flat on top of it, it becomes impossible for anyone who's sitting behind it or to the side of it to actually access the deck or cards. Um, it's completely unnecessary, yes, but incredibly eye-catching. Um, but the wood and the berry tokens are really kind of out of this world and everything you touch in this game feels like quality. Everything. If you wanted to draw someone into modern board gaming, well, this is the way to do it. Thing five, is this game any good? Everdell for me really is a bit of an enigma and it kind of forced me to challenge what it was I thought I wanted out of a game. So let me share with you a little story. So the first time we played Everdell, we made mistakes. And the gameplay felt a little clunky, but I assumed it was down to those mistakes and, you know, the first time you play. The second time I played Everdell, I realised too late that you could only have a certain number of cards in your tableau, and I demanded a rematch. The third time I played, I went for a strategy of only building high points buildings. And sure enough, this strategy also went awry. The fourth game, however, I felt I was really onto something as I focused on those event cards. Um, and I spent the game drawing cards, trying to get the ones that were exactly named on the event cards. And of course, this too failed. The fifth time, I finally had lots of pairs together and what felt vaguely like a solid plan. I, I was kind of happy. Um, and then my husband defeats me for the fifth time in a row with the exact same score, 69. I found myself so unhappy with my performance in each game and yet I kept pulling it down off the shelf again and again and again and no matter how many times I played it I still felt like I hadn't really grasped the game at all. And I think this is because of the limitations Everdell places on you that isn't present in other games. So it highlights you know how important or how good it is to combine buildings and critters together but this isn't something you really have a lot of control over or can really work towards. Um, the same is true of the event cards where they will give you rewards if you complete them um, but generally speaking it seemed to be of more value to use your workers on your own cards or play cards from your hand than it was to try and claim these rewards. So the game suggests you should try all of these things but you really should take it with a grain of salt. And that really messed with my mind a lot. This game left me rather disgruntled, but I just couldn't stop playing it. Like, I can't tell you if it's actually fun or not, but I keep pulling it down off of my shelf. And I think it's to do with this special card nature thing. It actually messes with my mind a bit. Because normally when you play a card game, you're given a set of rules and then you get to go about and, you know, play it as you will within that kind of structure. Everdell tells you you can do everything when really you can't. This game is rather a good thing. For sure, I wish there was a couple of things I could fix about it, but I can't help but think that those missing aspects of it are actually what make this game so incredibly compelling. Do I think you should have Everdell in your collection? Well, do you want an adorably clever card game that will make you the envy and delight of all of your friends? It's right here. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. If you like what I do, why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can hear about future videos. Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Everdell, why not leave them in the comment box below. I genuinely like hearing from people, you know. And until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions, and of course, perusing my collection. Take care, everybody.